there are a lot of shows in the world. And um, it's not every show that breeds like a, a, a scream and like, a, ah! like if you were to do that, I love that our show is like desperate for a scream and and for just like unbounding like boundless joy and so when we get to the stage door every single time we open the door and it's like ah! and the other day we had like a group from Australia and they were so hype and it's just I don't know I don't know how to describe it because it's just not to be taken for granted to like feel that the audience that is here is literally like here and they're here to scream for you <laughs> What a fashion show. Look at this, right? I mean, we do what we can. We do what we can. <laughs> you do what you can, totally. First of all, show everybody your nails. Look at their nails. All the queen. Look at this. I love it. So all of you have your nails done. It's a job requirement. Yes. Yes. What? Yeah. What a fun job to have, yeah. right? No, it totally is. And then we, they have to match our costumes, which makes me really happy because gold is my color. <laughs> I love makes that. makes my life easy because I have a little white, silver, neutral palette going on. So. And your color? Green. Green nails all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Two years running. I've, I've got the red here, which is nice. for There's some hearts happening. It's cute. And I have pink, which I hated ever since uh, forever. But now <laughs> it's a choice now, forever. And I have blue, but today it's actually just neutral and black because that's those are our neutrals. Silver, black, so I'm not really I love representing this. the blue. But. Well, first of all, you are Broadway's newest queens in six. Let's hear it for them. Thank you. How wonderful was it for the six of you to come to Broadway all at the same time? It was kind of magical. Um, yes. I mean, it's our sisterhood and the fact that I got to I get to spend brought two Broadway debuts <laughs> and like yeah these two on the end have their Broadway debuts and it's like I get to I just Thanks. spent a year and a half two years a year and a half oh god it was so long it'll be two with in, uh, yeah it'll be two in a, next in week a um <laughs> that we've spent together and it feels magical and to be all women of color is like another power move that we get to make and so it's it, I'm grateful I'm so grateful yeah, you hear about shows bringing over a cast member or two from the touring companies, but the fact that they wanted to bring our entire cast together, and it just is truly a pinch me moment, and it really is validating that we feel this energy on stage, that we feel like it can't be replicated, and we know that we have something special, but for the team to experience that, for people in the audience to experience that, and see, like, no, like, there's a chemistry that can't be replicated, and we want more audiences to experience this is really, I don't know, affirming. You also get so close to one another when you get to travel the country together, and we have so many memories, shared experiences of 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 nights in Chicago or or in Miami together, <laughs> living our life, and and to be able to bring such an outside relationship to the stage night after night, it's just so special, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Yes. I remember we we had just a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks or so, to get the show back in shape to be on Broadway, and. I was like, I didn't think that I would be nervous because we've done the show before, but I was so nervous. And so the fact that we were doing it together made it feel so, like there was one thing off my mind of like learning new chemistry and making new friends. Like at least I was able to have my nerves with my people and be like, okay, let's do it um, and have the support. And we would joke around with that like comment of us like do you imagine if we like do it on Broadway <laughs> um, like we would like start off in Boston and be like do you let's let's just imagine we're on Broadway right now like yes. just, let's just joke about it and then we manifested it and it <laughs> happened um, which is wonderful <laughs> Yeah, very, very wonderful and, and just such a great environment to have my Broadway debut and also Dee Dee's but yeah it, it, it uh, the nerves were very real <laughs> Um, the nerves were very real, and yet to be with a group of women that I know so well, a show that I really know so well, and yet I'm making new discoveries, and a character that I love to play so much, it's just you a dream come true. Really, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a, a real dream come true, and that sounds cliche, but it, it really is, yeah. Well, I want everybody to clap for them. This is their Broadway debut so for Gabriella and Dee. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. <laughs> So I'm gonna ask you two first, what do you remember about that first performance at the Lena Horne Theater making your Broadway debuts? Because they're magical, they only happen once. Yeah, they do. What do you remember? I remember my microphone uh, did not stop moving because I was shaking so much. I was like, 
a lot. <laughs> it was very, very terrifying because literally 12 years ago, um, well, I was 24 when I did the debut. Um, now I'm 25, yeah. <laughs> um, so I was 24 and so 12 years before I was 12 and that was my dream. I was 12 years old dreaming about being on Broadway and to happen 12 years later, it was a really cool accomplishment and hopefully I get to do it again. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, um, it was so special. With our show, we're able to break the fourth wall and look into the audience and uh, interact with them, which makes the show so much fun and every day is very different because no audience is the same. That's why I think we also love theater so much. But at the end, I sort of knew where my, my loved ones were sitting, but I didn't want to look during the show because I knew it would just do something to me. I don't know if I would giggle or cry or whatever. But at the end, I, I, you know, we came to our last song and I knew that we were there, the victory was there. And so I took that moment in of my parents and my loved ones and they were crying and I felt like I wanted to cry and I just took a, a photograph of that moment um, because it was just as special that I was on that stage as, as they were out there sharing that moment with me and it, it only comes once in a lifetime and I'm just so glad that my, my parents were able to be there. Yeah. Because the other four of you have done this before, so knowing that they were going to make their Broadway debuts, like what did you say to them? I don't know, I just wanted to make it as special as possible. Yeah. Um, Dee Dee is my dressing room mate. And I just was like, you ready? You good? Like just like <laughs> hyping her up because I could see the nerves. She was so flushed in the room. And I was like, you got this, like you're doing it. You've manifested this for yourself. And I'm so proud of her, like just watching her whole journey for the past two years with this role, with this show and in life. Like I, that's my sister for life. And I just could not, I, I, I want to continue to just pour into her because she deserves everything. I was so happy for them, both of them. And I think we, I think I took a video of them right before we went on stage. I was like, y'all ready? Like screaming at them, <laughs> hyping them up. And they were just like, <laughs> like I don't remember that. I was, eyes. I think I blacked out. I don't remember that. <laughs> and also though, like a Broadway debut in itself is such a huge accomplishment, yeah. but to, to debut on Broadway as a leading lady, yeah. it was just insane. We were, we were a major hype. My major hype all around that that Tuesday. We were all just full of joy. So much celebration. Anybody else? Oh, I mean, it's it's so special. And like you said, uh, you know, I think for us, it was our first time being a principal on Broadway, right? Yeah. So, it, and that also is so special, like to be a lead on Broadway. What are you talking about? Like, yeah. that's un unbelievable. So, actually, it is believable, and I'm so happy that we all got to share that moment together for sure. And Storm, what it was like for them that day? Oh my gosh, that day was just so crazy. There's, uh, at the end of the show, towards the end of the show, I should say, at, during Dee Dee's song, we all exit the stage, so we don't get to share the end of her song with her, but we can hear the audience erupt at the end. I remember taking in a moment of just like, I hope she's soaking it in. And then for Gabby's number, we are all right behind her on stage, and it's already just a electric moment to begin with, but I remember specifically that night of just like having this energy of like, do you see how they are receiving you? It was a moment of getting to watch someone exist exactly where they're supposed to be, where my, I have so many friends and family that have come and see the show that are just such big fans of you both that are, when we found out that our company was going, it was less about like, Storm's back on Broadway, but more, people are gonna get to see Dee Dee and Gabby make their debut, like these girls are so ready. So it really was just, I'm hoping you guys felt that energy of like, you are exactly where you're supposed to be. And I remember just being proud mama in the back, like, go out, baby, you doing it. My baby's made it to Broadway. And we get to have that moment every single night. It's really special. Well, you all started on the Aragon tour. How magical was that first performance for each of you? Lead role, taking on these roles on the road. Where was your first stop? Where did you all- Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Okay. Chicago! So <laughs> so take me back to that first performance. Oh man, I'm not sure I'm the one to do this. Okay, uh, can I? Uh, anybody can okay? start. Oh, was that that? It show? was that show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so that we that didn't. Show? We actually did not perform the first show of oh, six oh, oh, together oh, oh. as the six of us. Yeah. Um, we had someone from Broadway come in and um, stand in because Olivia was under the weather, unfortunately. And um, it actually, <laughs> yeah. so it didn't feel real until what, the week later, the week after? Yeah, the first show. The first show was quite awkward. It, was, it wasn't it was awkward. For opening it was night. Just, yeah. <laughs> it was the first preview. But first preview, she was back. And so I'm going to talk about that night. Because yeah, well, it was the six of us. Um, 
it was magical. I don't know. I feel like we were, <laughs> I don't know. Our energy was so electric. I don't know. If I, this is what got what Didi said. If my hand was shaking the whole time. My parents were in the audience somewhere and it was like their fourth time seeing a preview. And it was, I mean, we were exhausted. <laughs> we, had we, been, we had been rehearsing and all sore. day, all morning and then doing the show for like two weeks straight. So we were exhausted. But that opening night was magical. I don't know. I don't know how. I, that's the only word I can put in. Like, that's the only way I can say it. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, I do have to, I really have to commend alternates, understudies, yep. swings, Let's their work. Yep. Um, because without their work, we would not have been able to put that show on. You know, without uh, flying out from Broadway to Chicago to, to fill in with this new cast on their opening night, what pressure. And so... Just, yeah, Kirsten I mean, they, Kirsten yeah. and, and our alternates continue to save the day all the time. Um, but the opening night and, and just that whole run in Chicago was so special for me because that's my home city. So uh, it's really full circle. Speaking of parents in the audience, they were there, I think, probably 14 times, I want to say, they saw the show <laughs> in Chicago alone. Um, and yeah, I had uh, old teachers in the mm. audience and that was a theater I had been to to see productions before. Uh, and it was always a dream to perform in my city. I love my city so much, and so it was extra magical, and you can just imagine the tears that I was trying to keep down till the end because <laughs> what a whirlwind of emotion. So amazing. They had great pizza also. <laughs> thank you. Really it's did. polarizing, that pizza was but good. Yeah. thank you. Also, <laughs> Chicago was our longest tour stop in that including previews, we were there for 14 weeks. We were there for a third of the year, for over a quarter at least. And so for me, piggybacking off of Gabi calling Chicago home, for me it's a second home because that's where I was born. It's not necessarily where I continue uh, consider home to be because uh, I grew up in Orlando, Florida, but all of my extended families in Chicago, I actually lived with my grandparents during that time of the tour. Wow. So like out in the suburbs and I would commute to work every day. And it was really special. I moved away when I was so young. And so a lot of my aunts, uncles, cousins, they had never seen me perform. And so for them, the first time seeing me perform was in something so big and life changing for me. Like they were watching my dreams come true, which was, it was so special to be able to share that with my family. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean the first, so we, we, we did a tech process in New Haven and then we moved to Chicago and the first preview <laughs> was when I had COVID-19. Uh, this is wow. like a cool like new thing. Um, and so I was absolutely crushed. Like, what? I'm missing the first show together on stage with everybody? And so I just remember being in my room like, sitting in this big white room alone, like just like crying. Um, oh. But it's so funny, especially like we then did the show for another year and a half. So like I did the show plenty. Um, <laughs> and you I know you never the, get sick. Exactly, yeah. exactly. What were the you chances? Know, you never get I, sick. I, it, it, uh, no, I'm kidding. It's fine. Um, but but all that to say, I remember when I finally did get on stage. Also, I was the first person in the company to get COVID. So for our company, it was like it was a really a COVID new thing. Debut. So lit it was a COVID <laughs> debut. Thank you so much. And I, you would have thought that like I just had some huge surgery. Like everyone was like, Olivia, oh, I hope you're okay. And like giving me so much love. I was like, thank you. We missed you. <laughs> no, we it was like so it much. was also my birthday, and so yeah. they sent me a video for my birthday. It was like a whole thing. But the love that I felt from everyone was amazing. And then opening night yeah. in Chicago, which is like a week or so later, was incredible it was like I, I don't know and also the six team um, like the marketing the press all of it oh, yeah. they do such a good job of making us feel like stars so I just remember feeling like a million bucks and just so special um, yeah so thanks six yeah. <laughs> Storm opening night view or that first performance on stage in Chicago I'm going to confess something. Something I remember is that opening number, doing ex-wives, there's so much adrenaline, and I remember finishing and being so out of breath because we gave everything. I gave it all away in the first number, and we finished, the number's over, we're about to start opening chat, and one of my first lines is screaming to the audience, how are you doing tonight? And I had nothing left to give. We really had to find it from within, and I was like, we got a whole show left, and I think I might be done. 
fun. So it was a, a lesson that we have to preserve, yes. and you can't get too excited. But it, it was, yeah, it, I, I learned a lot that opening night. I was just on a high. It was really, really exciting. No, but it is like the biggest Broadway rock concert you're ever going to see. Yes. That is such a powerful opening that just goes through you, yes. goes through the audience. I can only imagine what you're all feeling up there. <laughs> like you said, I got a whole show ahead oh, of me yeah. Oh, yeah. to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what is it like living in the world of six? There's nothing like this musical. There was nothing before. And talk about the brilliance of the show's creators, Tony Award winners Toby Marlowe and oh. Lucy Moss. What's, I'll start. What's yeah. so wild about this show, right? They, the writers wrote this for a, assignment for school. It, they didn't anticipate it becoming this global phenomenon that yeah. it is now. And so it just, it blows. I wonder what they must be experiencing when they see it all over the world. I was fortunate enough this year, I went to Australia and went to the theater and there were people standing outside the theater holding a Bolin and Howard costume, just randomly for another show. And it really just showed the impact that this show has all over the world and it really, I don't know, it makes me think about how this story is so universal. So many people are looking for moments in their life where they can feel seen, where they can feel celebrated. We're in this age where we are constantly bombarded by other people's stories, right? We have access to our phones, social media. We're constantly seeing people grabbing at the spotlight and we need yeah. to be reminded and it's a practice that we do when we come to the theater you guys are doing it so graciously here where we take a moment and we leave space for somebody else and it doesn't diminish us by doing that it actually empowers us because we can see a little piece of ourselves in that yeah. story and the fact that all over this world people are yearning for that space just shows us where we are at this time shows us that this has been going on throughout history and i don't know it just is really impactful to me. I'm, I, I think that the creators are so brilliant in the fact that it started out as this small project and took on this life that they couldn't have imagined is a testament to their brilliance. Beautifully put, yeah. yeah. I think, I mean, the, the fans of the show have been, the for me, one of the best surprises because um, there's just so much love and like, um, they, they get the message of support and they get the message of lifting each other up. And so I love, like, people will dress head to toe in, like, I, I don't know if you're wearing red on purpose, but, like, that's my queen color. And, and I'm legit, like, so excited. And, and you're making me so happy right now. You know what I mean? Like, I'm feeling like just uh, we're, we're sharing this experience of just something that we love and something that we can all attach to. And it's just like you were saying, to see something that you can see and, and say, oh, I feel that that really impacts me. I, I love that feeling as an audience member, and I'm so happy to be giving that feeling to others every night on stage. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes. Right before we started rehearsals, this is this truly I had to take out from the depths of my brain because I haven't thought about this in so long. But right before we started rehearsals, uh, Toby Marlowe and Lucy Moss did a 54 Below concert right across the street, actually, from where we are right now. Um, and I remember that was my first opportunity getting to meet them. They called me up to the green room afterwards and I was starstruck because I was just so, so excited to meet the creators of this journey that I was about to embark on, not knowing how much it would change my life in the greatest of ways. Um, and I remember talking to some of the current queens, the original queens on Broadway, uh, sorry, the, at the current queens at the time, the OG queens on Broadway, about what this experience was like for them. and and. It's just a testament, what they shared with me was a testament to how beautifully Toby and Lucy created this show in that it's designed to give, you have your moment to shine, so you get to fluff your ego a little bit and have your little moment, but then the rest of the show, you support everybody else on stage. So you have your five minutes or seven minutes in Dee Dee's case to like <laughs> have your moment, but then the rest of the show functions as you are an ensemble member. We are an ensemble together of leading ladies, and so, I just think it's so beautifully designed to to let people step back and have this breath and not let it diminish your capacity to be a star in yourself while also just it's 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 giving the the whole is greater than the sum of its parts yeah. type of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. for sure. I we also break the fourth wall all the time. Yeah. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely adore being stupid and ridiculous and a fool is one of my favorite things to do in the whole wide world to make a fool out of myself. It is my favorite thing on earth. And this character, this show lets me do it. And I remember opening night and the creators being like, 
Howard is funny. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, yeah, I mean, you wrote it. Like, this is, this is funny, this is great material. And they were like, no, 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 but you're funny. And I was like, oh my God, thanks, that's very kind. Um, so breaking the fourth wall and being able to communicate with the people, with the, with the work itself, and seeing their reactions, seeing their faces when they when we say like crazy stuff, like for example, my song, I say some crazy stuff, um, and I just see like the little girls go like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, I'm so glad they're getting it. You know what I mean? So it's a great, great show. It's brilliantly written. The music is insane, and you also get to be a part of the show, which is also something so cool that like they they feel like they're on stage with us, which is so fun, so fun. Yeah, I remember, oh my gosh, I'm also pulling this in the back of my brain, um, the first time that Toby and Lucy came to Tech, and we did our first run through for them, and, <laughs> and after the run through, they came close to the stage, and they were like, so do you guys even really like like each other? <laughs> and we were like, we love each other. It was our first time like running through the show. Like I think we were just a ball of nerves. Yeah. And then they were like, yeah, because as soon as it ended, you guys like like giggled and like you were all happy. But she was, they were like, bring that to the stage. And I think the next performance, it clicked for us. And just having them there through that entire, almost that entire tech process, I think we had them for a good four or five days. Um, you just don't... Um, often get to work with the creators, the writers of the shows that you're on most of the time, especially being a touring company. Um, we got to work with Toby and Lucy. We got to work with Carrie Ann, who's the original choreographer. Um, and literally like the whole team from the start of this show. And I think that that like, played a part in how special this cast is and how special this process has been. And Toby and Lucy have truly been uh, like a huge part of us understanding the text in a different way. And I've, 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 I appreciate them for allowing us to see the text in a different way, like saying Howard is funny. I had that same moment with them, of them being like, God, we've only seen Aragon played as like this stoic, mean, motherly figure. And I'm like, oh no, I read the script and I thought Aragon was quite crazy. <laughs> she always interrupts people. Like she's, she's, she's very chaotic. And I, 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 was, I was like, that, that's what I live to do. I love being chaotic on stage. And so I, I like... I don't know, I think that Toby and Lucy have brought something so special even with this queendom and how diverse the queendom is through and through because not only are all six um, people, on women on stage, female identifying I should say for this cast, um, but we also have a full female band yep. that they've come up with which yep. is like Beyonce inspired through and through and you just don't see that and the band is on stage with us, like them, just the small decisions that they made to make this show what it is and how diverse it is is just freaking beautiful to watch and yeah. I want to piggyback off of that. It's also a testament of how well written this show is. Oh, the yeah. fact that you can have so many different types enter the show, so many different choices still work, it's because the script still functions. The jokes still land. When you can trust the material, the, the double entendres, the play on words are so brilliantly written that it works on its own and you can add and sprinkle different nuances to it and it doesn't make the piece fall apart. It's just yeah. a testament to how well written this show is. And even the, the musical double entendres, I know people mm -hmm. talk about Lin-Manuel Miranda and how he's like, you can pick this song and, and out of Hamilton, and it's this rap song where is, there are some Destiny's Child references in this musical, there are some straight up Beyonce references, there are Adele references, like there are things that these pop queens have instilled in their brains that connect us to the audience and yeah. it makes it easier for us to break that fourth wall. It's so brilliantly structured, so the way they did this. Oh, yeah. Olivia, you want to add something? Or? I mean, it's it's so funny because the show runs at around like 85 minutes, 90 maybe. And um, so it, it's a one act. And oh my gosh, I remember the first time I saw the show, it, it it's over in a flash and I was like, wait, wait no, no, <laughs> 10 more songs. Like you just want more, but it, it's, I love going to a show and it just flows and you you don't have time to be like, Gosh, where's the pop? Is, can we go to the like? You don't have time to sit back and be like, or go to the bathroom. Right, right. And so well, it just flows. Do. I know, right? Some people still do. Um, it, it flows so well, and I think that's a testament to the way it like the, uh, going into Aragon's number. We're like still singing like our group number, group number, and then she's like, boom, it's my turn, and we're like, whoa, <laughs> like it just really, it just hits, 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 and uh, I love being a part of a show like that where I can see in the audience that like. 
people are right there with me and they're ready to go. Yeah. 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 You all look sensational in your costumes, which were designed by Gabriella Slade, who has won numerous awards for these designs, including the Tony Award. What do you remember about the first time you saw yourselves all done up as your queen? <laughs> um, <laughs> Aragon is a full body of armor. Um, she comes from a family of Spanish warriors, uh. and um, so it's a full. It's literally a full body of armor. The, the costume weighs about 15 pounds, which I enjoy. I'm an athlete, so I love, love, love running around stage with weights on. <laughs> it's it's the, my favorite part of the costume, and I'm also bald in real life, and so it was a lot of talk of, are we gonna let her be bald, um, or are we gonna put her in a wig? How's the, are we gonna let her wear a crown? Like, what are we gonna do? And I was so grateful for them to also work very deeply with me on a wig, making sure that I was comfortable with the texture as a black woman, making sure that the hair is is everything and the costume s sits so snug and so tight and the tights oh, the yeah. three pairs of tights <laughs> which are also Beyonce inspired of the, the studded tights with the fishnets and then the boots all the glitter I'm not gonna lie when I first saw the show I was like absolutely not <laughs> I am not a glitter girl I don't like sparkles I don't like things that shine I it's not my thing I don't like to be flashy and so when I put the costume on that's all I saw was flash but I felt so powerful yeah. and I was so appreciative to, appreciative to the team for allowing me to stand in that power um, that I felt. Fabulous. Storm, first time you saw yourself done up. Oh my gosh. She did the costume design for the Spice Girls as well no. who, and I'm a huge, yeah. huge <laughs> fan of the Spice Girls so I truly like instantly was like, oh I'm meant to be in a girl group. I am ready to go. <laughs> it has always been one of my dreams of mine to be in a girl group. I thought I was a cheetah girl when I was younger. Yeah. Thank you so much. And so it truly was like, oh, we, I'm, I'm geared up and ready to go to war. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the use of the plastic and metal elements yeah. in a way, like yes, the plastic starts to mold to your body and you get used to it and we've definitely worn in our <laughs> costumes for sure. Plastic also stretches, meaning you need you need alterations every so often, but there is a sense of like that that structure yeah. of the costume reflecting this internal power that we have because it it kind of it I mean, uh Jane Seymour's outfit is this corset and in many ways it um it doesn't allow for the most amount of movement uh, possible, but it also allows me to elevate and feel so lifted and present and powerful and, and like I'm taking up space in that way because I can really feel myself taking up space in the corset. <laughs> and, so, and so in that sense, um, it's so beautiful what Gabriella Slade has done with, with the materials incorporated yeah. in the costumes. Yeah. No, before before this show, I did Aladdin, and the costumes are <laughs> different than they are in six. <laughs> and um, especially, there's this one costume where I'm one of Jasmine's attendants, and it's like this, like <laughs> Princess Jasmine, and it's like this long, purpley, sparkly, like princess dress. So my my past was giving princess sparkle dresses, and now I'm like. Like, and it's like like this hard and there's edges and there's spikes and I remember I was like who is that is that me um and it took me a second to really embrace it because I you know it's just very different from what I normally was bringing to the table and so it took me a second to adjust and then Wow, it clicked in and I was like, Shoom. I was like, I'm fierce. Um, because like you said, it really is one of those things where when you put it on, you have no choice but to like fill it up, yeah. you know? And so it was nice, especially my boots are oh, above the oh. knee. And um, it's just it's just like really awesome. Um, and I, I'm glad that I finally was able to say, wait, you look incredible, like mm -hmm. own it. Um, I hate it pink, like I mentioned earlier. <laughs> Um, but now I can't seem to stop wearing it, um, it you know, on my, you know, everyday casual uh, day to day. Um, and it's the ponytail for me. I love a ponytail. Um, I also have the most minimal amount of clothes on stage. <laughs> <laughs> which I felt kind of weird about in the beginning. And I was like, mm, I don't know about that one. But, uh, and then I wore the costume for the first time and then I wore the glitter and then I wore the ponytail and then the boots and the tights. And I saw myself in the mirror and I said, oh, okay. <laughs> I am very cute. And yeah. so 
it made me howard has really taught me to embrace that sensuality and, em and embrace that femininity femininity that i have inside deep down very very deep down <laughs> secretive um and it, it's made me learn a lot about myself and that i look great in pink as well sure yeah. i still am trying to break up with her but no, I <laughs> Yeah, it, it was it was magical. I think it was my first experience having a head to toe custom look. Yeah. And that was that feels special. I mean, the shoes for our feet, mine are a little extra wide, okay? In case you all wanted to know. Um, <laughs> fun fact. Well, the Italians, they make the shoes very narrow. And I love Italian shoes, but now I can wear them. Um, and the costume is so great. And it, you know, it's not every show that me as Gabriella doesn't, I don't need to love the costume. That's not my job. That's not my role. I'm an, I, that has nothing to do with really me doing my job. But this show is special because I happen to feel great in my costume. It is something I would choose to wear. And I love that I get to wear pants because I'm, Mostly a pants girl. I love a pair of pants. Um, and I, I love a strong shoulder. And wow, what, what a special experience seeing a costume be built for you and your shape. So even though the costumes are the same with everyone who plays the characters, they're also not because they'll take a look at, well, where does your torso sit? How, yeah. how wide should we make the peplum? Where should it sit on your body? Should we crop this? Should we do this? Um, yeah, how awesome. So as a, as a fashion lover, to have a custom look, wow, dream come true. But see, that's the brilliance of the creative team and the producers yes. of Six. Yeah. Okay, let's discuss how strong and loyal the Six fan base is. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> the queendom, right? The yeah. queendom. The queendom. I know we have some queendoms here in the house today. And watching, you must have so many, you must have had so many fans on the road and now here in New York, there must be so many stories, but what's one of your favorite fan moments? Anybody can start. Um, I would love to start. Um, I am Puerto Rican, born and raised, 100%. Yo hablo español, yo soy de Puerto Rico. Um, and so it is crazy to me that people will no problem at all. See the show, clap, clap, clap. This was great. Love it. 10 out of 10. Bows happen. And then they stand up and they get from the back of their pocket the biggest Puerto Rican flag they can find. And then they just tell the person next to them, can you hold the other end, please? It's too big. So they just hold it up like this and make me see it. And they're like, I'm here for you. You are amazing. I'm Puerto Rican too. And it's like the most Boricua, Boricua. Vamos, vamos. Look at that. They're everywhere, I'm telling you. We're everywhere. Um, and it's the most amazing, most fulfilling, thing and, and it just makes me so happy and and I, I could cry right now but I'm not going to because I have mascara um but literally it is one of the most beautiful things to just see that pride of that Latino pride just not not just Puerto Rican but just Latino pride we have two Latinas in the show and it's really cool to see that pride and 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 just be proud of of our roots and yeah, it's great to see. I love it. I love it a lot. Beautiful. Cool. And Let's Coquito. Well, I tried to ask my um, Jacksonville people to bring like the Jaguars <laughs> flag, but they haven't shown up in the same way. Uh, <laughs> Duval. Um, no, it, it, it really, honestly, like Didi, it, it makes me cry every time. When I see it, Like I'm like, Oh, it's so special because and like, sometimes I miss them too. And then you're like, like, wait, look, wait, look. Yeah, like it's so unbelievable. And I mean, I, I think there are not. I think there are a lot of shows in the world, and um, it's not every show that breeds like a a, a scream and like a, ah! like if you were to do that at sorry, I'm sorry. If you were to do that at um, you know, I don't know, uh, uh, some really sad show, right? You, 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 it's like. I love that our show is like desperate for a scream and and for just like unbounding like boundless joy and so when we get to the stage door every single time we open the door and it's like 
and the other day we had like a group from Australia and oh, they were yeah. so hype and it's just I don't know I don't know how to describe it because it's just not to be taken for granted to like feel that the audience that is here is literally like here and they're here to scream for you <laughs> like what? they also listen a lot yeah. like they know what we like like as people oh. not just as like they don't see us just as the queens. They see our socials and they're like really on top of their game with their stuff. And they're like, oh, okay, she likes Grogu. She likes Star Wars. I'm going to get her a Grogu little action figure next time I see her. <laughs> and I got one for my birthday. So it was like from someone I don't even know. And that to me is like, I, for everyone, I feel like it's like, that's crazy how you can inspire someone just by doing what you love to do. Um, because they love it. They love to see it. So And they're just very... Detallista, how do you say that? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, they, they really, oh, they pay attention to detail. detail right. yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Jazzy. Our, our company had a very unique opportunity to um, film a Tiny Desk concert during oh, our time yeah. in Washington, D.C. And that has expanded our ability to connect with people across the globe as well. And as I hope this this panel gets to do too. And it's one of my favorite experiences. Uh, I connected with a member of the Queendom during our time in Chicago. He saw the show a, a n numerous amount of times, probably five or six times or so. And he was on vacation in Europe, maybe Germany. I don't, I don't exactly know where it was, but this was a few months after we had left Chicago, uh, obviously being in September or so when the Tiny Desk was released. And he's walking down the streets of this European city, and all of a sudden he hears the Tiny Desk concert being played, and he runs over and he says, I saw them perform. And he actually sent me, he DM'd me a photo of the person listening to the Tiny Desk concert holding the phone and him. In, 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 and it would ju it's just crazy that, like, without even knowing um, the connections that we make across the globe, we have such a connection to people yeah. globally, which is just so special, and it makes the world feel smaller in a beautiful way. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, mine would have to be at the end of their show here on Broadway, which I love, the ushers will find little girls that are close into the aisles mm -hmm. and will have like little baby mosh pits <laughs> in the aisles. And, and I fully and thoroughly enjoy it because I like, I'm on the end of the stage and so they're right in front of me. And just to see in their eyes like, wow, I can do that. They see themselves in us. That for me is just so special. And so I just enjoy all of those little action, little interactions with those little girls because they are living their best lives out here and we are, we are too upset. Yeah stage and so it's it's just glorious to see their eyes just light up that's my favorite I love it one of my favorite things I've heard the story from multiple people at the stage door this album excuse me album found them during quarantine uh, there wasn't a lot of theater that was being made there wasn't a lot of albums that were being made that were theater albums and um, this show closed right before it was supposed to open the day that Broadway closed down and so a lot of people started listening to this album over the time when we were all locked in our homes and now people are finally like, I've been waiting for years to come and see this show, I can finally come and see it. And it just is a reminder as we all are connecting together and gathering to the theaters again that in that era when we all were locked up, we turned to music, we turned to the arts, we turned to books, we turned to just like ways that we can feel connected with each other. And it's just such a human thing to wanna gather and to feel each other's energy in these spaces and a lot of times at the stage door, people are constantly apologizing for, oh, sorry, I'm taking a long time with my playbill, or sorry, I I'm getting my camera together for this picture. And I have to remind them in a very Boland fashion of, sorry, not sorry, we don't apologize for taking up space. This is a pleasure to get to spend this time and connect with the energy that I just got to be a part of for the last 90 minutes. I am choosing to engage with you in this moment and you do not have to apologize for taking up the space that you deserve to take up. Thank you for being here. Thank you oh. for having, yeah, for having that, that presence. And I think that's my favorite interactions that I've been having. Beautiful. Oh end. yeah, I mean, I echo everything. Yeah. It's just my colleagues are just, the most well-spoken, <laughs> but yeah, I echo everything. I, I've been able to have just wonderful stage door interactions. Um, one time in uh, Boston, I was taking the tea and somebody recognized me from the show and said hi in, the, in front of me and my friends and that made me feel really cool. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, all sorts of interactions. Somebody photoshopped 
a, a par costume onto a raccoon. Um, I really like raccoons and strange creatures, yeah. and so that was one of my favorite. I think it's wearing a crown and has a microphone. Um, so, you know, all sorts of wonderful, wonderful <laughs> interactions, and that's still in my home. It's one of my favorite things. Is um, the attention to detail. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, because of that loyalty, the show has just launched the Six Royalty Program as part of the Six of the Month series. This is the first Broadway show specific digital incentive program of its kind presented in partnership with Broadway Direct. Now, fans who are repeat ticket buyers to Six on Broadway will unlock six levels of royal rewards, including swag and experiences designed exclusively for the Six Royalty Program. Fans can take part in the Six Royalty program by purchasing tickets through a Broadway Direct platform for visits to the show throughout 2024. Now, every visit to Six on Broadway where tickets are purchased through a Broadway Direct platform will be counted towards redeeming these royal prizes. If someone has already visited Six on Broadway in 2024, those visits will automatically get counted. Just like something you'd hear in a, in a, in a this castle, right? This is fabulous. <laughs> Terms and conditions apply. Visit sixroyaltyprogram.com for facts and more information. How cool is this program? Man, I bet these fans are upset they didn't start this a year ago, because let me tell you, <laughs> these people have been at the show. I mean, we've seen the same girls yeah. since Chicago coming to see the show in somebody, costume. And yeah, somebody had their 38th performance oh. I, the other day that they came in. So I was like, 38? Yeah, I know they're upset that this did not happen a while ago, because they'd have rewards upon rewards. But it's but happening still now. Time. But yes. it's happening now, so come see six. <laughs> Totally. But isn't that wonderful? I mean, you can unlock, it's like a game at playing at the same times, and, and the people who do this are going to get stuff that you normally can't get at the theater. Yeah. It's just stuff for this royalty program. I'm pretty sure one of their biggest rewards is yeah. like you get a you get a hotel stay yeah. in oh. Times Square. Yeah, yeah, and a Mac makeup makeover. Yeah. Which Talk about royal so treatment. Cool. Like, I want to see six. <laughs> and you're, and you're in tickets. tickets. Dee Dee's sick again. Yeah. No, I got we COVID. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to get the, the tickets now. <laughs> no, but I love that Six has done so many wonderful things during their show, like recording the cast album on opening night. I mean, no one has done that. So That's like a no-brainer, but no one ever did it. Yet they released that, and millions and millions of people stream that album, oh, and yeah. you get that live feel of it. Yeah, like that opening number that you said in Chicago, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, my God. <laughs> That's, yeah. That's how it's done. Six has done some extraordinary things. Last month, Six partnered with Rock the Vote. Mm -hmm. Now, how important is that for each of you? Yeah. You guys got to participate in yeah. that. Yeah. Get to go Jasmine that and I were out um, yeah. by the TKTS booth. Fabulous. Is it a booth? <laughs> it's yeah. the stairs. Oh, yeah. And, um, <laughs> and uh, we got to engage with, with fans and with, with uh, the folks wow. that were waiting in the line. And I was so nervous because I, I, whenever someone's trying to talk, I'm like, like in general, I'm like, don't wait. But um, people were receptive to like having a conversation. And um, I, I think that to make it easy and accessible, like I can find any excuse not to do something. Yeah. So if it's literally right there and it's like, okay, all I have to do is scan this QR code to make sure that I'm registered to vote and yeah. engage. Like it's, it was so brilliant of them to bring it so easily to the, to the people at their coming to the show, especially young, younger yeah. um, audience members and gain, uh, just getting engagement going with that. I think having Six partner with Rock the Vote was particularly resonant because Six is all about making your voice heard, your individual unique voice, the six of us, but also anybody who sees the show hopefully feels empowered to share their truth and their story. And I mean, it's an election year, so like it's very important that we all check our, our status and make sure that we're registered to participate in our yeah. civic duty. So it was, I really did enjoy yeah. getting to meet people. Some, some people, I think, were seeing the show that night, and so we got the opportunity to connect with them on a human Human level before they got to see us on stage and that was really special yeah i love that and next month the show is doing a sing-along performance wow. on march 6th how excited are you all for that I mean, i'm that's so gonna excited be, yeah i'm ready <laughs> I, totally. I like i I'm, i think it's i mean you hear people screaming along all the time yeah. during the show especially so <laughs> not singing no, not <laughs> screaming along all the time in the show or like saying lines before we can get them out because they've seen the show so many times yeah. Yeah. and so i'm excited because it's another way that we just get to connect with the queendom and go ahead gabby i saw you no i saw you had her are you gonna go yeah, I got yes! Yes! okay yes! is anybody else here planning to go do they that yes! is amazing yes! okay that's gonna be so much fun yeah. wow yeah. Oh, I didn't wow. I kick you like that. That wasn't supposed to be a kick. It was like, yeah, nice. 
<laughs> encouragement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, how exciting. It's just, it's, I, I can't wait. I've never done anything like that before. And I would love to be also on the other side in the audience of, you know, experiencing something like that. So how cool. It's going to be fun. We're going to be laughing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And just, <laughs> ah, what a party. I, I was uh, mentioning earlier that I was a little stressed out because, you know, well, Personally, my song is seven minutes and it's very wordy yeah. and uh, English is my second language. So I was just like kind of stressed out that I would forget the words if I hear people singing along. But the thing is, they're going to sing no, along. So they'll they got it. <laughs> they're oh, going to be great. So I, even if book. I do like miss the lyrics, I will just be like, you know, so I'll be great. It's going to be an out of body experience. I mean, yeah. I, no Broadway show has done this. The so energy in that theater that night is about is going to be electric. It's going to be madness. What about the riffing? What's that? Because like it's just gonna be. Ah, yeah, I want to hear all the riffs. I want to hear every single person in the audience riff something. Yes. I'll steal some riffs. Get ready. Riffs. We're gonna riff at the, at the Lena Horn. That should I, be the next live recording. We should get a recording oh. of this night and. Yes, yeah. Right. Totally. And you will also celebrate the 1,000th performance <laughs> of Six 1,000th on March 9th. Yeah. And you're gonna be there. I mean, 1,000. That's a big number, right? I cannot believe it. When you said it earlier, I was like. March 9th, that is like around the corner. Yeah. It's a month from today. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. Because we used to see like, oh, this is the 250 performance. When I was growing up, the Daily News and the New York Times used to run a little picture from a show celebrating the 250th or 500, 1,000th performance. So get ready for that. That's very exciting. Oh, exciting. You know, we have a room full of actors watching. These roles in six are so coveted. I'm sure many people went up, would love to be one of the six, it, one of the six queens. What did you each do to prepare for your auditions for these roles in six? And what is your secret to a great audition? Because, you know, as actors know, you never know. You have to open that door and you have to go in and you have no idea what's on the other side of that room. So how do you not psych yourself out and how do you psych yourself in for an audition, specifically six? Anybody can start. Um, I think the team did the job of psyching, the, the psyching out or whatever, not getting, is yeah. that what you meant? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think the team did a good job with that. We actually all auditioned in the same room together. Yeah. Um, you were put in groups of yeah. queens, and so all the Aragons came in the room together, and they all did the monologue and sang the song, and they did that throughout, unless you had like a special situation where you had to get out of the building, so they had like put you with someone else who had that special situation. So I think that that was a very special audition process, and it actually made the audition not feel so, uh, how do I put this? Like, you know how sometimes audition rooms can be really like, yeah, intimidating. Sometimes they can feel intimidating yeah. when you're in an audition room and I think that Six does a great job with making the room feel like a family. And also I know that they do that to scope out, to see if you're trying so hard to compete. Like, don't compete, you're just yeah. cheering on the other girls. And I think I remember vividly all six of these, all five of these women um, from the final callback. And I remember even talking with Didi and she was just so like, yeah! in the room and I was like, I like that girl, I don't know who she is, but yes, girl, like it was just a lot of cheering each other on. So I think, like I said, Six did a great job with not making the room feel like it was an audition room, like and it was a concert yeah. setting. How do you normally, how are you on auditions generally? Um, I don't get nervous at auditions because no one can do what I can do. So um, <laughs> yeah, no one is gonna bring to the table what I bring to the table. I am Kayla Wilcox and there is no other like me. So I don't get nervous to go into audition room. Um, all I ask is that the Lord opens the door and when he does, I'm that's when I'm supposed to do my job. So I've already done my prayer and my work. That's <laughs> well, getting in the room is the first step for me. It's not, a, it's not an audition. You called me. <laughs> that's fabulous, that's great. Storm. My little trick is that for that, well, however long I'm in that room, five minutes, 10 minutes, I have the role. Yeah. I get to play that part. And so uh, right now, um, my partner's been going in for auditions a lot and I can see him getting nervous before and I have to constantly yeah. remind him like, right now you get to be that character. Walk in yeah. and have your show. You're gonna get to live in the circumstances, you're gonna get to put on the performance and if that's the that's your clo open night, night, closing night, your your yeah. matinee yeah. all rolled into one. And so it, it takes off the pressure and it makes you like bask in the joy of the performance a little bit. Um, yeah, that's in my go-to mindset. I love that. Yeah. I love that too. Yeah. Also, I'm living, yeah. oh, I'm just living for this. Wow. You know, admittedly, I still get the nerves. I get the butterflies because I, I care. It's just a part of me and I, I have my little mantras and, and routines that I click into. But something that's a piece of advice 
knowledge that has helped me in any room that I've walked into is that an audition for one thing is an audition for everything. I I was living, I was subletting with a friend of mine who is a casting assistant, actually casting director now at, I believe, at um, Tara Rubin. And um, he, he had told me, I, I had asked him, like, what do actors not know about the casting team that we probably... It, it might be helpful to know. And he said, the amount of paperwork that, and, and like bookkeeping and, and note taking that goes into auditioning, like if you get to a callback or even a final callback round, but it doesn't go your way for that thing, know that when the next project comes, they have you on a short list for that because you've already matched exactly that that energy, that vibe. So they're gonna bring you in. And like you have this, this assurance of knowing that if you do, do good work, even if it doesn't necessarily go your way this time around, it's gonna come back around again. So that's been really helpful. There's been a process recently where I was so sure and so secure in what I brought into the room and it didn't go my way, but I know that they're gonna cast so many more things going forward, so yeah. Yeah, it's, it's hard not to take things personally. I mean, I, I literally am like, but I was great, right? And it's like, it's like <laughs> not about me in that moment. And so I think I, I, my friend was like, you know, they, need to find someone like they're they're looking for someone and so like if it, uh, uh, they told me to go into it with the mindset of like you're here to solve their problem like you 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 I'm the answer to the question that you're asking um and then if it doesn't go your way or like the way that you want it to it's it it, it is okay and it's like not a reflection of my talent not being good enough I I've done a little bit of I was gonna say I've done a little bit of casting myself but like just like in, in general like if, if you know we're, we're putting together a project and sometimes it really isn't about that like this person didn't sound great it's like oh but this is the exact vision I had for this role you know what I mean it's it's just so not taking things personally has been my like biggest thing to to remember as I move through um yeah I still get nervous um, I just try my best, guys. Yeah. Like that's really all that it takes. Um, it, it's they don't want to see you fail. They're there because they they know that you're gonna do good. They know that that you're good. That's why you're there. And just by being there, that makes you very brave. And you showed up, and that's what's important. Um, and also, like when it came to six, like someone said, "Oh, you would be a good Howard." A friend of mine, uh, Zoe, told me, "Oh, you would be a really good Howard." I said, "Who?" And I was six in musical, you know about it? No. And when I found out about it, I was like, oh, I was dancing and singing real high and then costumes are shiny and all that stuff. And pink, I don't like pink. So I, I don't, I'll skip that one. Um, but then my agent was like, hey, six, they're, they're looking for a self tape. And I was like, okay, well, well, I'll send it in because I would love to be seen for this. Um, I just know I'm not gonna book it. But as long as I'm getting seen, and so then I sent the tape, I sang Bang Bang by Jesse J and Ari, uh, Nicki Minaj. I didn't do the rap, thank goodness, um, because I would not be a good rapper. Uh, I do do some really good freestyles, right, Kayla? They're great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, but um, I, I sent it and then they called me back and it was a really crazy time because I was going through a breakup, fun Aww. fact, while I was auditioning. And um, my, it, it came to the final callback. What? I reached the final callback with all these amazing women. And then uh, I, a single tear fell during my song. It was like, uh, all you want to do is mwah And then a tear fell. And then all they said was, thank you so much, Didi, for coming. <laughs> and I was like, thank you. Uh, hopefully I see you soon. <laughs> Bye! And I just said goodbye. And really all that I took from that was I was myself and that was the best thing I could have done. Um, and it was a lot of fun and I got to meet all of you. I remember all of them from the audition. It was so cool. Gabby was next to me and it was so crazy to think that she booked it also and be like, oh my God, wait, we booked it. That's crazy. Um, so it was, it was a fun experience and I was a fool. I was wearing cheetah print. <laughs> Don't don't wear cheetah print <laughs> or a pink. Coffee. <laughs> oh man, I I do get the nerves, yeah. um, and I think a couple times in my career they've they've disrupted an audition process actually, or um, have made me disappointed with the performance that I gave or whatever. 
But what has really worked for me lately is um, being as prepared as I can be, as prepared as I can be, and doing my best, whatever my best is that day, whatever I have to give, so that no matter what way it goes, I'm not questioning what I did. I'm, yeah. it's like, well, I literally did my very best. And even if it's a day like today when I'm recovering from something I had three weeks ago, not feeling yeah. so hot in the throat or whatever, or other things, um, or, oh man, I didn't get enough sleep last night. I mean, life gets in the way. We're not machines and we can't treat ourselves like machines. But whatever your best is that day, just know, leave it. Yeah. Like you put it in the room, leave it. Um, and I really have to silence that voice in my head. It's actually a self-sabotaging voice because yeah. you'll get an audition and it'll say, you, you, the voice will say, you're not gonna book that. Mm -hmm. So I will find myself or I would find myself maybe doing the tape or doing the audition, but being a little sloppy with the tape or knowing that the, you know, this is years ago, letting that voice run my life. And so it was sabotaging me and now, um, no, I'm going to give it everything. Even if the little voice said, there's no way that that's not you. They're going to see that you don't, you don't play that type of character, whatever. That's not true. And I need to tell the voice, shut up. <laughs> You're going in the closet. You've said what you said and now it's your time out and it's my time. So then I can just walk away feeling good about the work that I did. And yeah. if it doesn't go my way, I let it go. The other trick is in the room. If I start to get psyched out, yeah. Uh, I just tell myself that it's a dream. And I'm not kidding. I tell myself that this moment is a dream. It doesn't really matter. Of course it matters, but it doesn't matter. It's a dream. Every, none, none of this is real. And literally that's what I do. That's what I did through the six process because the process did make me very anxious. Um, it mattered so much to me. It felt like I was hanging everything in my future on that opportunity. And of course, if I didn't get it, I would survive and I'd still be at it. But I was really putting a lot of pressure on myself. I was very, very, very nervous. So just to tell myself that it wasn't real um, actually was was really helpful. <laughs> That's beautiful, all of you. Go, yeah. I'm glad you got it, Gabby, because I remember yeah, you yeah. so vividly yeah. from that final call back dance call that you were fire. I remember. Thanks. I fire. Wow, thanks. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Gabby's okay. giving dancer. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, you wow. you started talking about self tapes. Actress here, actress watching. It's a self tape world now. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you do 40 takes? Do you, someone shut you down in the house saying you've done this 10 times? We're <laughs> having dinner? Like, the secret to a yeah, self tape. I, I actually, I, I loathe self tapes. I think they're awful. Uh, um, I, I'm a person room. I, my vibes come off in, in, in okay. the room. So on tape, I just, I don't think that I translate well on tape. Um, so if I can get in the room, I will beg and say, let me let them see me in the room. I, tapes are not my thing. But as far as rules, um, I give myself five takes of whatever I'm doing. Um, and normally I do get it by the third. And if I don't get it by the third, then I'm actually starting to panic. Um, but I don't like to do more than five. And if I can't figure it out in five, then I text my agent and say, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Because I don't have the time. I don't have. Yeah. I have anxiety. Yeah. I have depression. I don't got time to be getting upset about one singular role. There's more coming. <laughs> no, but people psych themselves out. Yeah, I know yeah. major stars who who go in there and say, "I do 35 takes," yeah. and then their partner says, "Put it away. Yeah. It's one of those you're going to send in. Let's have dinner." Yeah. Storm it's hard because we've right as us as performers we transition yeah. into being suddenly I'm a lighting designer yeah. suddenly I'm a sound designer I'm the director yeah. I'm the producer I <laughs> relight yeah and so you're taking on these truly truly in the slates oh truly and so there's a shift of the mindset it often comes down to a trusted friend that has to tell Storm you're done. Yeah. You've done the work, yep. you going over it for the 27th time, you're not gonna get that one beat. That, yeah. Cause we're used to the reason, at least I was drawn to live theater was, it exists outside of yeah. me. It's not for me to judge, it's yeah. not for me to have control over. It's something that, it's for the audience to receive and as long as I'm honest to the work and I put in the work, then that's all I can do. And so oftentimes I have to remind myself to trust that, but it is really easy to become your harshest critic when you're forced to sit back and, yeah. and no, no, I could do that better. I can hit that note and make it even clearer. And so I would suggest someone that loves you and that you love back. And when they see that ugly side come out and that critic come out that oftentimes does come out when we're making self tapes that they, that they can say to you with love, put it to rest, 
you are enough, this is enough. You're not sending them your final product, you're sending them that you're in process. So show them the process yes. and trust the process. Yeah. Truth yeah. bombs. She always drops in. Yes. Storm has wisdom today. Yeah. She always does. But I've been in the business for a minute. It's all right. <laughs> you know, something that as, as we're chatting about this that's just hitting my brain is we live in such a world where we can like cater every little thing with social media to like be exactly how we want somebody to perceive it or what we yeah. think they, yeah. they will perceive it. And when you're in the room, you don't get that opportunity. You don't get to do that. And so I love this idea of what you said about you're showing them that you're in process. I don't necessarily have a hard and fast, like I'm done after this many takes, but there is a point, 35 takes in, you're not, the, the, the returns are diminishing at that point. You're so tired at that point. Yeah, and so I, don't, I think, I, th I mean, ultimately, we don't get paid to audition in our industry. Yeah. We're dedicating so much time and energy into preparing and taping down th these these auditions, and we're not necessarily uh, yes. If you book it, great, but like you still didn't get paid that work for the however many hours you took to to prepare yeah. for that. And so, I don't know. It's just something to consider. How much do you value your time, and what what do you emotionally and literally schedule wise have the capacity to do like don't step until 3 a.m bugging your neighbors yeah. singing a self tape you know <laughs> also maybe maybe work with a a, a trusted yeah. beloved source like my mom sometimes is my facetime reader i don't know i don't know why i still use my mom you guys but but my mom isn't afraid to tell me Jasmine, we've been doing this for so long. So I'm like, okay, okay, I gotta, I gotta wrap it up for mom. Um, and so, so having a friend like that who can be a little honest with you about, with regards to, yeah. if you respect their time, then like you'll respect your own as well. Yeah, I think it goes back to what Gabby was saying about preparation because, I mean, and granted, sometimes we don't have enough time or we don't have a lot of time to get the the turnover of the tape. But I. I, I laugh when I look back at the tapes, especially the sides, yeah. where it's like, I said the line pretty much the exact same way 17 times. <laughs> so like, it would be one thing if I was like, in a British accent this time, and then this time I'm doing Jamaican. Like, I'm literally <laughs> doing the line basically the same way 15 times. Like, stop. So I've started to really just do the side a couple times. You know what I mean? Like, I, I do the side a couple times. We, we made it, we, we, we connected great. Vocally, <laughs> with the song i i can sing for hours and like because i i want it to be so perfect but in the end like it also sounded pretty much the exact same so we're really trying to just do it a couple times like and if i'm prepared if i know the lines and i'm not fumbling then um and then I feel like I can connect right away when we when we do the tape. Yeah, two, 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 three times, yeah. and <laughs> let's call it a day, okay? <laughs> For me, personally, I love having eye contact, um, and so it, I love getting to do a self tape with someone in the room, uh, specifically if it's an actor, because if it's an actor, then. <laughs> and then mom, because I've done self tapes with family members too, uh, and it's it, I've done it with my dad because my mother's accent is very strong, and it's very funny, and <laughs> and, so, and she will also can't read English very well, but my dad can be a little bit more uh, good in English, and so <laughs> my dad would be like, "Ah, uh, sorry, didn't see you there." I was hoping that we would want to go out sometime for the, and I was like, dad, it's already weird that you're acting like you're interested in me and now you're not giving me anything. Um, so I would say have friends who like the same things you do, like acting, um, and that they're willing to help you out for a self tape because um, I, it was the other day I wrote my own play and I directed it back home and it was so much fun to do, um, which made me want to pursue that career a lot more. Uh, and I did the casting process as well and I got self tapes sent to me and I was so excited. Um, and that's another thing uh, which I didn't know about until I wrote my own play. They're, they're excited to see the self tape. I, I, I got it super excited and super like, 
happy every time I would get a self tape like sent by an actor and I would see how much work they put into it and I can tell who was in it and who was thinking about what they're looking like. Yeah. It's insane. I can tell when you're thinking about what your face is looking like other than like for example the people that got casted for my play I remember Ambar, Ambar Bonilla, she's an amazing actress. Um, she played my Athena. And uh, Athena is a war goddess. And so I saw how grounded she was and how dry and how like blunt she was. And and I was just like, this is it. This is this is who I'm casting. This is it. Um, so just have someone in the room that can uh, help you with that groundedness <laughs> and not your dad or your mom. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I mean, it, it's similar to just any other audition process in the sense that it's very helpful just to, to try to take the pressure off yourself. It's interesting you say that. Self-tapes, it's so, because once you do them a lot and you, you know what it feels like to be editing them, you are so much more conscious of what you look like. Yeah. I'm not in a room thinking about does my face look pretty. Or isn't all of my self tapes? It's just it, it it that's stressful. So you know, I, I, you have to really try to take the pressure off and be like, don't think about that. I'm not doing my best work if I'm thinking about that. Um, but I just did at my acting school, Baron Brown in Los Angeles. I did um, a Zoom refresher course just last month on um, self tapes and specifically because I was like, I could always use a little bit of you know, confidence behind that. Cause it's just, it's so strange sometimes. But my teacher said, you're not going to give the Oscar performance in your self tape. You're, you're not because, so don't expect that of yourself. Do your very best, but that's not going to be your best work ever. You're going to do your best work when they give you the job and you've worked yeah. with the director, but it took so much pressure off. And maybe someone else would say, that's not right. I want to strive for that. But you know, it, it made a lot of sense to me of just do the best with what you have in that moment and, yeah, take the pressure off because yeah. it can feel so awkward. <laughs> Those are all great, but it takes you back to Storm saying, it's a pro it's, I'm in process. Because yeah. you don't know what the director's going to tell you once you yeah. get there. Yeah. Yeah. You could do it 19 different ways. I know you all share different dressing rooms. Is there a go-to dressing room before you all go on? No one drops not, by. not before we all go on, but before we all go, uh, when we all go off. It is. <laughs> yes. oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we, it's, it's, we're all kind of in the same little nook, so it's, it's a fast moment when we are going on stage and yep. we're kind of just in the hall like, ah, yep. okay, let's do it. Um, and I do afterwards like to have a little hang in the dressing yeah. room and kick back. So, um, yeah, we, we like to hang out after a little bit. It's nice. So it's your, it's. Yeah, it's me and Gabby's dressing room. <laughs> Fabulous. All right. My final question is, what has made being a part of Six so special for each of you? Aww. Oh. Aww. <laughs> There's too many things. There are too yeah. many things. I mean, I, like, I think I said it at the top of yeah. this discussion, is that what makes it so special for me is that we are all women of color. Yeah. Um, and so these young women in the audience are these young kids in the audience come see the show and they see... Yeah us, um, they could see themselves in us. And for me, that is just the representation. It really matters. And I think that Six has done such a beautiful job across the board in all of their companies of making this show diverse, not only on stage, but off stage, in the booth, in the in the wings, stage management team, it, the band, like it is such a diverse show through and through. And I think that's what makes it special about being a part of the show. And I get to be with my sisters for another. Yeah. <laughs> I think for me, I've become such a huge fan of you ladies, and so no matter, you know, we've been doing this for almost two years now, and a lot of life has happened in those two years, so no matter what state I'm coming into at work that day, I get to heal through your songs. And there's, like Jasmine said earlier, there's so many moments after our particular song is over, we get to sit back and be in the ensemble of each other's numbers and support, and every day there's a new moment, and there's a new piece, and there's a new lyric that one of you will say that will really resonate with me and it helps me stay present in my life. It helps me stay present on stage with you and it helps me, yeah, I'm, I'm healing through y'all's incredible performances because you're so good at what you do that it makes, I hope it makes me a little bit better, but it, it, at least for Storm, it helps Storm feel a little bit better every day getting to come into that space where 
Today we're gonna step into some female empowerment and a little bit of excellence because that's what these girls are serving. And no matter what stain I'm at, I'm gonna get to rise with them. And that's a gift to get to do every single day. And we're, this is gonna be broken record over here, but these women that I get to share the stage with night after night, as well as our incredible alternates that both from the Ergon Company on tour, as well as the Broadway Company, um, I've never had sisters. So I, this group is, to, to have a group of women who are so secure in what they bring to the table and who they are, just come in with love and support, no matter where we're at, whether we're happy, sad, yada, 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 we still come together knowing that we have each other's backs. And I've never experienced that with a group as consistently as I have with this group of people. And so that is that is most definitely my favorite part of this experience. And I, I know that this will be a lifelong sisterhood that we have together. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I, I, I love thinking about the fact that when you when you first meet people, like you have no idea maybe the impact they're gonna have on your life. And so when I think about that audition room and like I can like still picture everybody and now we're sitting here at this panel like just like on Broadway as leads, like what? It's absolutely incredible and I, I cannot, I hope I make it to like 92 and I'm like, well, I was on the, uh, Broadway and, and your, your Aunt Dee Dee was, uh, she was right there with me. She had the, the pink on, she loves pink. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just, I feel like we're at a moment, we're in the present moment and I just, these are memories that are gonna be our remember wins, you know, hopefully when we, you know, make it another 80, 90 years. <laughs> Um, Six has taught me to be very much unapologetic and to not be afraid of making really bold choices. Um, and I'm so much more sure about myself because of this show and also because of this group of amazing stars. Um, and I'm gonna be so honest right now, the, it, it's already been what, two months? Yes. Two months on Broadway. Um, and the thing is, like, we don't know how long this will be lasting for us. And that's just in general, like, as, as a career, we don't know when this is gonna come back. I don't know if I'm ever gonna be on Broadway again. Um, and to just have to share this experience with people who care so much about me and about others in the company, I'm so privileged and I'm so grateful and just, I would have never thought that I would have been a part of such an amazing group of people um, and so talented and so unique and so so wonderful and so humble. Um, just wonderful, wonderful women. And I can't wait to do the, re the reunion when we're 90. Yes. Yes. Um, and we're 90 years old and we're singing six, very flat and, and <laughs> just not right and trembling. Mics are gonna shake because we're old and it's gonna be great. I'm, I'm, and I'm gonna wear pink. So. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's been, I mean, echoing what everyone said yeah. about this great group. On top of that, um, speaking to fellow actors and performers and industry members in the room, I would say 99.9% .9 of people who want to do what we do have to um, go through hardship for it. It's not just like this. So we know when success comes along, we know the other side of it. So I... Uh, to be make simply to be making a living in the arts. That's it. I w I will never take that for granted because I know what it feels like to want to do it so bad and not know if it'll really happen. And have the doubts and have the the little voice and um, even maybe other people are using their voice to tell you that this is not the way or you shouldn't be doing it or it's not whatever. There's all this stuff that we go through to to do what we love, which is what I'm doing right now. And so to be making a living in the arts is is incredible, a privilege, a dream come true, um, so great. And yeah, like Didi said, these moments, they don't last forever. So I am cherishing that I am having a moment and um, it's just very, very special because there are a lot of uh, people that, that would want to be in, in our position, and I'm really, really, really grateful for it, just soaking up every moment. Well, I want to thank you for the most glorious afternoon.
sitting here with the queens of six. Remember, March 6th is the sing-along performance, yes. and March 9th is a 1,000 performance. Let's hear it for the queens of six.